now House Minority Leader, Democratic Congressman Hakeem Jeffries of New York. Leader Jeffries, thanks for being with us this morning. So there is a uh, continuing resolution that was passed through the House thanks to a whole bunch of Democratic votes. The government will, in fact, be funded at least for a few more months. Uh, tell us about your support of this bill, why you thought it was important to get on board and work with Speaker Johnson, at least in this case. Well, good morning. Great to be back with you. From the very beginning of this Congress, Democrats uh, have maintained that we are ready, willing, and able to find bipartisan common ground on any issue for the good of the American people. And we've repeatedly done just that. We've done it in the context of now avoiding two government shutdowns. Uh, we've done it in the context of securing $16 billion in disaster assistance for the American people. Uh, we've done it in the context of avoiding a catastrophic default on our nation's debt that would have crashed the economy and triggered a job-killing recession. And so this has been the pattern that House Democrats will continue to follow for the American people. We've said repeatedly we're going to put people over politics. We don't just say it, we do it. Uh, and so we were able to come together and reach this continuing resolution that did three important things. No spending cuts, no hard right conservative policy changes, no government shutdown. Leader Jeffries, those are certainly three accomplishments, but what has not been done yet, any aid to Israel or to Ukraine, as well as border security in Taiwan and others. And we're now more than a month from the terror attacks, the October 7th terror attacks in Israel. Congress has still not sent a dime uh, to our allies there. What happens now? Do you have any sense as to when a supplemental may go forth? In my view, uh, the most likely path forward uh, is for the Senate to continue to do its bipartisan work and find uh, common ground in order to fund Israel, fund Ukraine, fund our allies in the Indo-Pacific, fund uh, the border security request that President Biden has put forward, and make sure that we are funding humanitarian assistance for Palestinian civilians who are in harm's way in Gaza through no fault of their own and for civilians in other parts of the world. The Senate uh, has been in negotiation with each other, Senate Democrats and Senate Republicans, and it's my hope that sooner rather than later they'll reach an agreement, uh, they'll send it to us in the House, and we can move expeditiously to send a bill to President Biden's desk so we can get this done. Jeffries, I'm, I'm curious if anyone in your caucus ever shouted down another member and called them a smurf and, and launched insults in their direction or elbowed another member. Like, would that happen? And what would you do? And are you concerned about the behavior that we've been seeing on the Republican side when there are so many big issues that need to be addressed? We certainly are concerned because our focus should be on solving problems for hard-working American taxpayers. We're going to continue uh, to fight for things like lower costs and to grow the middle class for safer communities, fight for reproductive freedom, defend democracy, build an economy uh, that works for everyday Americans. These are the things that we should be fighting for. Republicans are fighting each other, literally. Yesterday was another episode of Republicans Gone Wild. And unfortunately, it wasn't the season finale because we're going to continue to see it. Uh, Congressman Jeffries, let's get back to Ukraine. Can you give us a specific timetable? Ukraine seems to be lost in the shadows right now with, with everything else that's going on in the world. The Middle East is in flames. The world is on fire, actually. But Ukraine is still out there, still fighting every day, losing personnel, fighting a vaunted enemy with much more in terms of population growth. They can, they can keep sending people into the, into the front lines, Russians, all day long, every day. But Ukraine cannot. They need us. What's the timetable for getting something done to help Ukraine? It's an incredibly important question, and it was unfortunate that we were on the verge of providing significant support to Ukraine at the end of September, uh, and then the rug was pulled out from under the Ukrainian people uh, when a continuing resolution was presented that cut out the bipartisan progress that had been made in the Senate 
uh, in the House. So here we are in terms of the Ukrainian people continuing to fight an important struggle. It's a struggle of democracy versus autocracy, of freedom versus, you know, uh, tyranny, of, of truth versus propaganda, of good versus evil, literally. And we want to stand on the side of the Ukrainian people because it is in America's national security interests. The challenge that we have is that there is a loud and growing pro-Putin caucus in the House Republican Conference. And it is led by people like Jim Jordan and Marjorie Taylor Greene on the inside and Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson on the outside, who are on the side of Vladimir Putin, not on the side of America's national security interests. And that's very challenging. That's why it's important for the Senate to act in a bipartisan way sooner rather than later, send us a bill, and then I think the votes will exist in the House to get it done.